All right, here we go. Now we're getting started. Hi, I'm Ramez Nam. We can call me Mez, as my friends do. And again, we're going to talk about unfucking the planet and why, third time, it's possible to have hope against climate change. Now I'm going to start with the bad news, which is that climate change is real and the planet is warming up. And we used to have a consensus that the safe limit of warming was about 2 degrees Celsius. Now we've moved that down to about 1.5 degrees Celsius. We've already warmed the planet about 1.3 degrees Celsius. We have very likely just missed 1.5 degrees Celsius. That's the bad news. We see the impact now. We used to think climate change was something that was going to happen in the future. And now we see the impacts of it right now with fires, droughts, coral bleaching, uh, freshwater issues, flooding, and so on. Now, when I started in this field, when I switched from software to climate and energy about 12 years ago, what we believed was that by the end of this century, we might see as much as 6 degrees Celsius warming, 12 degrees Fahrenheit. That's more warming than has happened since the last ice age. And that would be a true catastrophe. The good news is we've bent the curve in that last 12 years. We've gone from expecting 4, 5, 6 degrees Celsius to now thinking we might come in at 1.9, 2.5, somewhere in there. That's not good enough, but every tenth of a degree matters. And the reason we've made this progress, one of the big reasons, is the incredible cost decline of clean energy technology. Solar panels used to cost $500 or $100 a watt. Now they sell for 20 cents. That's a 500 times price decline in those years. And no one expected this. The leading experts in energy in 2010 thought we'd see solar prices drop by half in five decades. I was a crazy optimist, thought they'd drop five times as fast. I was wrong. They dropped twice as fast as the most optimistic people on planet Earth. And it's not just solar. It's wind power, it's batteries, and now the ability to take clean energy and make hydrogen, make liquid fuels. And as all of those technologies have come down in cost, because they are technologies, fossil fuels have not. Over the last 140 years, the cost of fossil fuels has just oscillated, just bounced around, because they are, are a fuel. Whereas the cost of technology for clean energy has been plunging. And that crossover that we're living through right now is what gives us hope. That has also led to radically faster deployment of clean energy than expected. These are forecasts in the colored lines from the International Energy Agency of how much solar we deploy in the future. Each colored line is a new year. The black line is what actually happened. And so that exponential growth in things like solar, in things like electric vehicles, solar and wind are 88% of the new electricity we'll deploy this year. All the growth in auto sales is electric. The peak of gasoline-powered vehicle sales happened already in 2017. All of these technologies are going forward. Now, we're not done yet. There are a huge number of unsolved problems. Agriculture, cattle, deforestation, making steel, making cement, uh, how we get the last 20 or 30% of our electricity. Now, I could tell you about the technologies that might solve these, but actually the most important ingredient in solving these problems is you. It's not a technology. The technologies will come. They're out there. It is people power that shifts our efforts into these sectors. And we think we haven't been doing a lot on climate. We haven't been doing enough. But we've been doing a lot for decades. It started in Europe, where in the 90s and the 2000s, Germany started deploying solar. Denmark started deploying wind. Norway started subsidizing electric vehicles. And those efforts scaled these technologies and brought them down. And they happened because of citizens. Now it's spreading to every corner of the world. Even Xi Jinping, president of China, declared a couple years ago a pledge of China being carbon neutral by 2060. It's a pledge. It's not really policies yet. But that's a sign of the times. But what many of you don't know is that seven weeks ago in the US, we passed the most significant federal climate policy ever in the history of this country, and one of the most significant uh, globally. Overnight, we roughly tripled federal spending on deployment of climate technologies. Since the 90s, it's gone up by a factor of 15. And every one of those dollars catalyzes a huge number of private sector dollars. Now, all of that having been said, it's not just you as citizens and voters. It's all of us as customers as well. These are the logos of the RE100. These are companies that have committed to 100% of their electricity being clean by 2030. And it's basically it started with tech companies, but now every consumer brand has done this because they know their customers want a clean product, and now it's cheap. But it goes beyond that. It's also employees. Amazon was a laggard in making pledges like this, 
But then three years ago, thousands of Amazon employees wrote an open letter to Bezos and hundreds walked out. And that switched Amazon to a complete pledge of massive decarbonization and creating a $2 billion venture fund in this area. So we as employees have an incredible leverage too. We are the ones who create the future. You are the ones that create the future and together we can unfuck the planet. Thank you very much. Hey there, thanks for watching, I'm Brady. And I'm Firein, and we are the people behind Ignite Talks HQ. The speaker you just watched was in a race against time. Every Ignite Talk is 20 slides, and the slides change every 15 seconds, whether you're ready or not, so you gotta keep up. It's out of control. Could you do this? <laughs> we think so. Follow us in the usual places to learn more about how you can give a talk. And don't forget to subscribe for more speedy talks. <laughs>